as a chief architect, I'm really kind of supporting all the teams and all the, 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 the tech strategy. We do a lot of uh, prototyping and um, incubation of technologies as well. So I'm a big believer in like starting with the, uh, with, uh, I always say that when I do tech strategy, most of the time I'm clueless about what we should do. I, I have no clue what's the best strategy. What I, what I do is I optimize for learning. So we, we introduce these small projects uh, for example, Workato, we, we, we licensed it and we started really small and then we saw that it, it was uh, um, the way to go and then we started to expand up until today. As part of like our, our, our um, principles in EQT Tech, so we, because we work mostly internal, um, we try to be thought leaders uh, and try to uh, try a lot of technologies before we suggest them to our, to our uh, portfolio companies. it's very common that people come to me and they say, oh, I need to automate this process. And I ask, okay, how many times do you execute it for uh, on, a, on average on a month? And they say, well, I don't know. And I say, you know, then how do you know that that's the first one you should automate? You know, there's like um, the first thing we need to have is some sort of visibility. So if you compare the value add of say, teaching our users to use uh, pivot tables in Excel, versus the value add of automating an end-to-end -end process. It is not uncommon that teaching them basic ways of working is uh, it, like in this, like the, the grand scheme of things saves them a lot more time than you know, the, the super cool, sophisticated AI project, right? So having like finding the, the, the balance between these two kind of ends of the spectrum where you basically have like training the user versus like a full automation. It's, it's quite hard. And, and we're tr still trying to, to find the, the place here. When we talk about friction fighting, it's about um, optimizing small things that one wouldn't classify as an application. We wouldn't say, yeah, let's build an application for that. Uh, it's like tiny things that, uh, that like increase tremendously the efficiency of our users. My developers always say, oh, but it's cheaper to, to build the connector yes. or it's cheaper to build a microservice for that. And I say, no, it's not. Uh, and we just have a case last week where Workato changed the APIs and we had a, leg a legacy um, service that is like um, a proxy service for interacting with Dropbox. Um, and um, now I had to spend uh, three weeks or two weeks of development uh, refactor. First, rereading the code of that rest of that uh, uh, Node.js application, redeploying and whatnot. So, I think Workato has a very, um, a, a very good business model. For me, as an architect, one of the things I try to do is to have my 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 senior developers think as har architects because they tend to think about how to solve stuff in their own stack. And I when I when I see them talk to each other saying, hey, I can send you this data point and you give, give me this back. And, and they think, oh yeah, but if we use Workato, this thing is, is gonna be better. And, and, and that's when I tell them, oh, now you're talking like an architect. Now I'm happy. Now I can just go out to some other meeting, you know, and um, letting them fail experiment, it's, it's um, pretty, pretty important uh, for me. And, and that shift in, mindful, in, in, in mindset, I think is great. And the, the, it took a while to convince, you know, our more uh, like um, coders to, to love Workato. It took a while, but I think now they start understanding because it takes a year for them to understand the, the maintenance they didn't have to, to do to, to, to connectors and stuff. And even price-wise, I, I compare like weeks of development with the price of a connector over a year. And it's, uh, it's pretty obvious right now that, that we, we, we still save money um, with this approach. So. And peace of mind, of course. I also saw that in the integration landscape. So if you look at MuleSoft, for example, they say, oh yeah, we solved that problem for you because everything, you know, we give you connectors for everything. And again, what I saw that I didn't like of, uh, of, um, of MuleSoft's strategy is the fact that they rely on the um, like marketplace of connectors as their strategy for 
getting a lot of uh, out, like pre-baked integrations, right? So they say, uh, here's an API. Um, now I rely on my service providers uh, to, to build, I rely on professional services firms to build connectors so that my clients can use that. And that's a sales channel for them, right? And what I liked about Workato is that you took responsibility for those connectors. You said, no, you know, we, we're in the business of uh, like making the, the software use, useful for you. So we'll take care of building these connectors. So there's like an, the, the economics of your business model is aligned with ours. The fact that you create recipes and, and Workato maintains those, those, sorry, not recipe connectors, and that Workato is the developer of those recipes. I see that as a uh, plus, as, as a value add that I'm willing to pay for, right? Okay. We tried um, um, robotic process automation. At the same time, we tried uh, Workato. And we, after we learned how both um, approaches worked, we ended up um, treating the, the, you know, like Workato in combination with a good cloud strategy. We think it's like the way to go because we, we use the word remote controllable system. So when you move to the cloud and to SaaS, you end up with a stack that you can remote control. So there's no need for robots um, to, to do that for you because you have APIs that you can use. So we try to go that as a first choice and we recommend um, you know, go, going down the, the RPA route only if you have like really legacy systems that they're, they're, they have no other way to, to, uh, to be remote controlled. Things like um, inviting investors to invest, that process itself would be like a crazy, you wouldn't imagine if you saw, I mean, you probably see a lot of these ugly processes yourself, but it's like, um, you know, someone generating a file and then someone manually sending emails one by one, things like this. And we went in and we said, okay, why don't you give me a list of all the, the, the investors and we can write the recipe that sends out DocuSigns automatically and then, when they reply, we, we have like this column filled up for you. And this is like a friction thing, like a thing that would take them three weeks to solve. We could like squeeze that down to one day, right? I could like choose any company. I go there and I say, okay, here's a modern data stack. Here's Workato. I just made these two important choices of data stack and automation stack. And I have 55 use cases uh, a year later. So it took a year to achieve 50 use cases. The, the, the data stack is like insane. Like, I don't know, 2,000 2, um, models created. It's, it's like crazy numbers, um, which is great because then, uh, you know, there's small things that change the mindset and the, the art of the possible. So the company becomes, starts thinking about automation as like their first solution you know they, they don't think how do i do this manually they think first how do we automate actually we have procured software on the on the basis of whether they're compatible which one is compatible with workato for example bamboo hr yeah. the reason why we bought bamboo is because they had the work at the connector yeah. okay. so um i think there's um um i would love to see workout in more places